Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, March 1st. It's a uh, chilly day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. And I hope you're all having a great weekend. Enjoyed that extra leap day yesterday. Did uh, whatever people do on leap day. Uh, it, it, it's funny, it's, we kind of want it to be a celebration, but it just never really <laughs> happens. But it's nice to have an extra day, I suppose. So today, got the Bing's favorite out. It's actually packed with Haunted Bookshop. Uh, although I've been smoking this for a bit, so I don't know how much longer this bowl will last. I may switch off to something else while I'm talking to you. <clears throat> what I want to talk about today is uh, packing. Now, I know there's like 837 packing videos out there, and uh, they're all good. Well, I, I shouldn't say that, but I'm sure many of them are good. I haven't watched all 837. The ones I have seen have been very good. So, why am I making another one? Well, I just want to I want to make a, a simple one. Uh, I want to make one that uh, kind of distills everything down and, and, and tells you how I think about packing. And I think about packing in a very simplistic way. And maybe this will be useful for beginners. Uh, maybe some of you experienced smokers will find it interesting too because it might help you figure out why you pack a certain way. Uh, so the problem with packing, I think we've all experienced it at some point, you know, early on in our in our pipe smoking career. You fill a pipe and you go to light it and you just can't draw through it. Or you can get a little draw and you think it's going to loosen up and the darn thing just never smokes right. Uh, you're, you're fighting it the whole time. You can't keep it lit. Uh, this is often due to, to, to overpacking or packing too tight. Uh, the goal, and the way a lot of people talk about it, is to have a pipe that's packed such that the draw is more impeded than it would be if there was no tobacco in it, but just slightly. So you should still be able to pull air through it with no issue. I've heard it described as the way a straw feels when you're trying to eat, uh, drink a milkshake. Oh no. Oh no. I'll be right back. Now, there are a variety of methods uh, that, that have been described over the years, and I've tried most of them. And I found them not to be all that different from uh, the method that I hit upon early on and that I'm going to share with you. But then I want to talk about some of these other methods as well. So you've got uh, things like the Frank method and the the swirl method, or the vortex method, or uh, the air pocket method, I think it's called. Uh, and these are all complicated and difficult, and, well, as difficult as sticking tobacco in a pipe can be, but, you know, multi-stepped, or, you know, you gotta, you gotta do something special. And then there's the, what is often called the three-step method. Now, I kind of hit on this accidentally, and then a bit later, one of those uh, helpful folks that hanged out in the local tobacco shop uh, explained this to me in in a in a different way. So the three-step method is you first pack the w the way it was described to me, and please forgive me. I I know I'm going to get somebody mad about this. You pack first like a like a boy and then like a woman, and then like a man. Setting aside all the stereotypes and everything, <clears throat> that's the way it was described to me, that's the way it was taught for many, many years. What it means is you pack lightly, then you pack a little bit harder, and then you pack it in uh, tight. Not not tight, but tight, tightest. The, the, uh, the hardest that you're going to pack the pipe. Now why do you do that? Why, why would you want to do it in those, in those layers? Well, if you think about it, What that's doing for you is it's giving you a space at the bottom that's loose. And then and then the next space is going to be a bit of a cushion that allows you to get the top bit packed in tightly. Why do you want the top bit packed in tightly? Well, for the same reason you want to do that charring light and then tamp down the ash. You, you want to have some resistance at the top of your chimney to help accelerate the airflow through the chimney to help the stuff at the bottom heat up and burn. Or, well, in this case, to get the stuff at the top burning so that it gradually burns down to the bottom. Um, 
it would be different in a chimney because you're not burning from the top of the chimney. So that that tight packing at the top helps with that. Why do you want it loose at the bottom? Well, you need to be able to pull air through it, and it's that simple. You need to have a space at the bottom that allows for air to be pulled through. If you packed it tight all the way down, you can't get that air to come through. And that's the mistake that most beginning pipe smokers make the first time they, they pack a pipe. They think they need to have a consistent uh, thing from top to bottom. So that's the three-step method. I can't say that's the method I use because honestly, I just it, I've been doing this for so long that it is just automatic. I will just stick the pipe down there, stick my hand in in the tobacco pouch, and just kind of shovel the the tobacco in with my finger. And I'm adjusting the pressure as I go along, but I don't think about it. Uh, but it is essentially the three-step method. I just don't want you new guys thinking that you have to walk around all the time thinking pack like a boy, pack, you know, it, it's, it's a lot easier than that. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this video. Now let's look at these other methods. So uh, the Frank method, you kind of pile the tobacco up on top of the pipe and you use your thumbs to go all the way around it and, and like kind of tuck it in. Um, what that's doing is it's allowing you to sort of gravity fill the bottom and then slowly and in a very awkward and inefficient manner <laughs> increase the packing density as you get towards the top. Uh, folks swear by it. I haven't found it to be any different than my regular three-step method. There's the swirl or vortex method where you, you take the, uh, and I've got, I got another pipe here that I'll show this with because I don't want to put the hot ash in my palm. So you'll take a palm full of, of, of tobacco and you invert the pipe on it and you like do this and try to like let the tobacco accumulate inside the pipe as you're doing this. And what's that doing? Well, it's kind of the inverted Frank method. And it's, again, putting very loose tobacco in here, whatever's kind of riding on the top of that ball that's being formed. And as you get towards the top, it's going to compact down more and more because there's less space for the tobacco to accumulate in. It, once again, is creating low density at the bottom, high density at the top. And this one I have tried, and I just frankly find it to be a mess, and I, <laughs> I, I, I can't, I haven't tried it consistently enough to say that it's exactly the same as the other methods, but it sure on the surface seems like it would be. Uh, but it's, it's silly, <laughs> if you ask my opinion, it's just silly. So, that's the, the swirl method and the frank method, and then there's the air pocket method. This, this one is kind of fun. Uh, what you do is you take uh, tobacco, and this really only works with ribbon-cut tobaccos, uh, unless you really rub things out and are dedicated. So you take some some uh, ribbon tobacco, and you get into a really, really, really tight ball, and you drop it into your pipe, or you you, you make it just tight enough so that it fits in, and it immediately expands. I've got too many pipes here. <laughs> It immediately expands and sort of grabs onto the walls and then you just kind of like nudge it down until it's sitting at the bottom. So it, this really tight ball has expanded out and is now filling the bottom. And then you pack on top of that. Well, that's creating, as, as the name implies, an air pocket at the bottom of the pipe. Uh, that's great. It, it again is doing exactly what all the other methods are doing. Low density at the bottom and then higher density as you move towards the top. So, you know, it, one of the great things about pipe smoking is we get to play with this stuff, you know, and I've tried all of them. And the reason I tried them all is I thought, hey, you know, a lot of people talking about this Frank method, maybe it's better than what I've been doing. It just hasn't proven to be the case. And maybe for you it will. I, I can't predict that. It's fun to play with these things. But keep in mind this basic principle. Low density at the bottom, increase the density of the tobacco as you move towards the top. If you think about it that way, you'll never have a pipe uh, that you can't smoke once you pack it. So I hope you found that useful. Um, let's see what's going on. Uh, we had we had another uh, Friday night live on two days ago, Friday, and it was great. Steve and Kathy Annis uh, were fantastic guests. I uh, really enjoyed talking to them, and I uh, got a lot of good positive feedback on them as well. Uh, I'll put a link below to the replay. I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't. It was just a good time. 
if you, I will also link to Steve uh, Ennis's new uh, channel. He's only got, I think, three videos up, but he's only had it for less than a week. Uh, and he's, he's a great storyteller. I think you're going to enjoy watching Steve's videos, so please check him out. I'll link below. Um, and this coming week, uh, it's going to be different because I'm, it's just going to be me. I'm not going to have a guest this coming week. Although I'd like to think about it as you're my guest this coming week. Uh, I'll take questions. If you guys want, you can email me questions ahead of time. And my email is on the About tab of the, the, the channel. It's canerodpiper at gmail.com. Um, I'm thinking about having folks Skype in, and I, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do that or not. It might be a technical disaster if, like, six people want to talk at the same time or something. Uh, I know about Zoom. I just don't want to get into that. There's other guys doing that. You know, Professor Jeremiah does a great job with Zoom. That I don't want to move in on that. I, I think uh, he's the guy you should look to for Zoom meetups. And... So, so we'll see how it goes this weekend. I hope a lot of folks show up because I'm going to be really depressed if only three people show up. And you know, we've, we've had all these people show up for the guests and nobody wants to talk to me. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, shop news, uh, things are clicking along. As I've said, a lot, a lot of pipes going, going on, uh, getting worked on. Uh, you saw... If you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, uh, and I'll put all those links below too, uh, you saw I finished up a couple pipes yesterday and made this one for my friend Rick that uh, using that blue stem blank that uh, I showed you. I'll insert a picture because when I showed you the stem blank, everybody wanted to see what it looked like in the, in the final uh, version. So I'll, I'll stick a picture in here for you. Uh, I, I love it, and, and Rick's excited about it too. So uh, really, really looking forward to getting that back to him, uh, getting in the mail on Monday. Uh, working on a pipe right now that is very reminiscent of a Bing's favorite, which is why I brought this down today. Uh, interesting pipe. I'll, I'll show you some pictures as I go along, but it doesn't have a stem. But if you were to put the Bing's favorite stem on it, it would look very much like a, a Bing's favorite, although it's probably a good 60 years old at least. So it should, uh, should be a fun project, and uh, I'll show you some 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 of that as we go along. Uh, I am working on a video uh, project right now. It's uh, it's an interesting little project that uh, is very different from anything I've done before. And I'll say this much: it involves bamboo. And I haven't yet gotten it to the point where I can put together one video and release it. So you, hopefully, in the coming few weeks, you'll see a, a shop series coming out. Uh, one last thing I wanted to mention, folks. I don't know how many of you are aware of the post feature in, in YouTube. Uh, so there's a community. If you look at your channel page, there's a community tab. And if you go to that community tab, you can make posts, just text, pictures, uh, video clips, other people's videos, things like that. And they will appear in your subscriber's uh, subscription feed. I, uh, I don't know how many folks are seeing those, but it's a real useful feature, and I've been using it for things like if I, if I find a new YouTube guy, I never remember to write down his name so that I can talk about it on Sunday, so I'm just sticking it in, into one of these posts and letting people know I can put a direct link to the channel, you can see the, the preview of the, the, the video, and you can go watch it if you want. Uh, I'm using that for announcements of like who the, who the next live guest is, or you know any, anything like that that might be going on. Uh, so if you don't have the post, and there's a, there's a box at the top that uh, you can either see videos only or videos and posts, I recommend you turn that videos and post option on because you're probably missing out on a lot of stuff from not just me but, but other uh, YouTube guys that are trying to communicate with you and you don't know. So try it out. If you don't like it, you can always turn it back off again. But it doesn't, it's not oppressive. It's not like you get thousands of these things, uh, just a, an occasional one, uh, and it's, it's a good way to sort of stay up on things. All right, guys, I've used up enough of your Sunday. I've got a lot of work to do, and I think my wife has some uh, adventures planned for me today.
So I will let you all get back to your Sunday. Have a great one. Have a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.